Abu Dhabi's Ali Medical Harbor in Putsk. Uh, Putsk, uh, if you're not familiar, is a small town just uh, northwest of Gdańsk, not far from Gdańsk. Uh, the site was uh, uh, discovered in uh, 70s, uh, late 70s, uh, by recreational divers, and then uh, was uh, excavated by a uh, uh, number of uh, teams. Uh, this is a uh, Bay of Hood uh, with this uh, very uh, characteristic uh, geological feature. If you look on the map of Poland, this sort of uh, narrow sandbar, uh, sandbar uh, called the uh, Kal Peninsula is very characteristic on the uh, on the map, and it basically uh, uh, cut the Hood Bay. From the from the Baltic Sea, in geology probably have very important impact on development and uh, later on uh, collapse of the Putz Harbor. The bay itself is divided by external bay and internal bay. The division is actually very clear, and the reason for that is geological as well. Uh, it's a uh, translated on English seagull sandbar, which is this sandbar. Uh, uh, from the air, it looks like that. Uh, when the uh, sea level is lower, you can basically walk from Reba to Kruzdica. It's more than 10 kilometers, uh, just to, you know, uh, only in some places where it was actually dredged for sailing prison, you have to swim. But basically, uh, it is probably. Again, this geological uh, feature which have very big impact on development of Putsk. And basically, the uh, harbor in Putsk were stopped in use uh, more or less at that time when the larger ships were developed, when the Koga came into use in the Baltic and it was, and it needed deeper water. So uh, it is more or less uh, uh, the same time. It is uh, just a uh, bathymetric uh, map. It's, it's all, always nice to see bathymetric map on such a large scale because you can see nothing uh, and you can say everything is there. We really did a great job. What we did it, the Maritime Institute from Nantes did for us. Uh, they make 300% uh, uh, coverage. So basically, we see when you enlarge the picture, you can see very small details. Very small details, I would say, in the size of five centimeters elements you can see uh, from the bathymetric uh, uh, side. This is, of course, a modern channel uh, built for the industrial zone, which operated here in uh, 80s of the 20th century. Now it's, uh, it's almost uh, out of use. But uh, based uh, what we really re uh, realized after the bathymetric survey and multi beam survey is the scale. It is 15 hectares of wooden structures, thousands and thousands of wooden piles uh, with very few uh, dendrochronological dates so far. Uh, work from the 70s, uh, well, discovered in the 70s, this is work uh, of Wiesław Stempin, the first researcher on the site, and he find amazing stuff with it. He find a, a very early Slovenian poetry, find uh, uh, a lot of artifacts, but above all, he find a couple of boats. Uh, I will talk about the boats a little, a little bit later. I mean, the Polish scholar basically say, oh, it is mixed uh, Scandinavian Slavonic tradition of the boat building, but at least some of the boats are very, very Scandinavian. Uh, this uh, another stage of research. Uh, this is uh, done in the 90s by uh, my institute from, uh, uh, from Thorin and for, uh, by the Central American Museum at that time, uh, mostly focused on area which include these two shipwrecks. Circa uh, five hectares were surveyed at that time. Uh, and this is uh, uh, some work which was done in 2014 for National Heritage. Board uh, completed by the Maritime Museum. 
it basically uh, digitalized some elements which were um, uh, provided by earlier research. And this is our work in the project uh, called uh, it is European funded project uh, under the Interreg Central Europe. Uh, it's uh, called Virtual Art. It's the project uh, which includes 11 partners from nine countries. And the whole aim of the project is to visualize archaeological sites which are not accessible for general public. Uh, majority of the partners in the project are dealing with mines, including Hallstatt and including other mines, which are not accessible for, for the public. But also, there are two uh, underwater sites. One is in, uh, in Poland and one is in Croatia. Uh, we started, as I uh, said, with the bathymetric survey, with the multi beam survey. We also use the air photography and uh, use the photogrammetry uh, to do to build the uh, 3D models. Uh, of course, we had first the idea: okay, we'll we'll create nice model of the harbor. When we went there, we realized that's unrealistic. There's uh, thousands of wooden piles on this area, as I say, more than 15 hectares. And we don't know the faces. We know the multi this multi-face site. So we very quickly uh, focus on selected areas and build the models for selected areas. It's, it is this year work. So it is just uh, from a couple of weeks of work, we have two terabytes of data. Then, uh, then you have to deal with it. And, you, you will have, and if you build the models, you just multiply the data, and, uh, and it's getting more and more uh, complex. Yes, it is just a, it's a very short. Uh, one of the structures which we find there, and uh, the depth is quite shallow. It is between uh, one meter and a half, 180 up to two, two and a half meters depth. When I look from the archives and the reports from 90s uh, or late 80s, the visibility, visibility was like 12 meters. Now when we have three meters, we are happy. Uh, and the problem is the vegetation, which overgrow the, uh, the structure. So we start work in April, and it was the first heat wave uh, of this summer. And as we work day by day, we could see the vegetation was sort of growing, was growing even on the equipment which we left overnight under the water. Uh, so you will see later on the movie, uh, uh, how difficult is particular, particular phot photogrammetry if you have this sort of hairy thing sitting uh, on the wooden structure which moved uh, uh, with the water, and it's so the scale uh, of the of the site in the, this air uh, photography. These dark things is a sort of pit. Uh, it's a pit, and the whole archaeology is sitting in this pit. So uh, more pit, more archaeology you expect. Uh, the things which we are finding, they are on the edge of sand and peat. Because it is the shallow water, the uh, water, in particular the waves, when, when you have the eastern uh, or northeastern wind, uh, the, the peat is removed, so the archaeology is removed with the peat as well. Uh, so the, the site is actually in danger, and I would say this perfect example that UNESCO Convention doesn't work. Uh, Uh, the most interesting things, which uh, probably uh, were the shipwrecks, is uh, four or five of them spread on the run. So again, there is no any pattern uh, how they uh, uh, how they appeared. Uh, just briefly, this is the first one which was uh, which were found from 14th century. It's still there, it's still underwater. Uh, very sort of salt and Baltic type of uh, boat and sort of. Uh, 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 then is this boat. I mean, I think it is underestimated uh, in the literature. It hasn't been published perfectly, but it is perfect boat. You could see uh, the bars for the sailors. You could see sort of uh, uh, wooden wooden things which put, uh, hold the the, uh, the bars. I mean, uh, it looked very much as a Scandinavian long boat, uh, and it. Really, uh, I would say even the Scandinavians didn't find 
uh, both in the condition like that. This is the uh, elements which hold the mass, and this almost looked like the older girl uh, on this uh, famous boat. So uh, the boat was dismantled, so it was put in a preservation, and hopefully this year or next year will be put together. I hope so. Uh, again, this is a, a, the drawings from, uh, from that boat. The chronology of the 10th century, and in the sense uh, of the techniques, it is very much, as I say, sort of Viking boat. Uh, there are another two boats. Uh, the uh, the, uh, the part number three is from the 13th century, is uh, that one. It uh, was excavated by uh, my, uh, our institute, and during the war, we find another boat which is sitting under it. So, uh, the this is uh, number five, and it's still still there, still uh, in the sea. And this was also uh, uh, dis uh, dismantled and taken into preservation. Oh, this is what I mentioned already. Uh, this is a small dugout. Uh, what is interesting is the chronology, 8th century. We're moving to, to earlier stuff. We also find artifacts from a migration period on the site. I mean, it seems that uh, deeper in the turf, uh, in the peak, my, my, the really interesting things might uh, sit or took a way to be discovered. Also, it doesn't look spectacular, uh, the timbers, uh, but they're the timbers from the last boat or zone boat, with this historic type of boat, uh, which means we can really expect something uh, much earlier than the uh, early medieval. And then the, uh, the structures. In, again, look for the scale. It is just 100 meters, yes? And uh, the site has uh, 50, uh, 15 meters. In, when you die there for the first time, you just don't understand at all what is happening. There's no like, you know, you have a bridge or you have a pier, you die there and you record it. This, the stuff is sort of everywhere. You have some land structure here, which is cut by the, this uh, structure, then a sort of three part, a parallel structure which is going that way, and you find uh, the piles are from the size of three, four centimeters up to this size. Uh, uh, so it's uh, really neat, uh, complex dating, uh, including C14 and dendrochronology. That's just suggestions uh, uh, how it could, could work. Of course, we find also stuff which is uh, which is uh, more uh, more easy to uh, to interpret it. It's like uh, a structure which, uh, which well appear so they sort of secure the edge of the harbor and there are places where are three elements like that sitting uh, uh, on top of the, the top of each other uh, they are the structure which I said so we were earlier we don't know what was the, the purpose but, but obviously uh, is is still there yes uh, and then reconstruction then because of the aim of the uh, project is that we actually Visualize somehow. Uh, of course, now we know we we, we want to provide the uh, pure archaeological truth for our construction. It would be rather uh, artistic vision, uh, which probably would come out at the end of the uh, at the end of the project. If you, if I can take the privilege and show you a, some short. Uh, moving out uh, uh, what we done last uh, on this season. As I said, some of the elements are sort of heavier and eroded, and here you have some of the destruction of the piers. Uh, is there a modern <laughs> um, harbor in the woods? Of the vegetation and try to do the photogrammetry of the, uh, the stuff which is 
moving like that. Uh, so, and it was it, it wasn't there when we started. It started to grow day by day. In the, just in two weeks' time, it was co covered completely. It is uh, clear by uh, divers. So it. Uh, send people to clean that from the vegetation before taking the, uh, any pictures. And uh, again, digital photography the piles are actually quite difficult to, to deal with because you have to go on the ranch to have a complete picture of it. It's much easier to do something flat, which is lying on the on the floor. But or like the uh, palm forest, which is spread uh, on the ship, right? Of course, the, another big thing which we have to deal with all that data is the, the georeference. All that stuff uh, has a georeference. We can compare the pictures taken in the 80s uh, uh, from, from the air, and this, uh, we can see how much peat was there. And, uh, and how much is today? And there are some zones where uh, the dead missing something like 30-40% of the peak. So the, as much archaeology is missing as well. We also try to use the scooter and put the three cameras and uh, take the in one in one go because the Agisoft now allow you to do the photography from the movie, but it doesn't really work uh, very well. As I said, you have to spend time going around the files to, to have the, the, the perfect or perfect to have an acceptable model. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs>